LinkedIn articles and reports is obviously what the topic's on today. So today's learning objectives are um, to be able to identify the main features of a newspaper article, uh, deploy the five W's techniques to organise the information, to understand the structure of a report, uh, to change opinions to statements into a to change an opinion to a statement in a report, uh, proofread and edit your article. And that's your for your report as well. So obviously whenever you finish any any work, it's vital to proofread, but again, I'll go through that uh, shortly. So your starter activities, the five W's, you've got two pictures up. Um, so the black and white picture, who do you think um, this is? What is he doing? Where is he? When do you think it was done? Why is he doing this? And how is he doing it? Do we have any answers? Feel free to put some answers on the chat if you want to any of those questions or all of them if you want. I don't think I could tell you who the person is. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, an artist has been suggested. OK. Uh, doing some sort of painting. OK. Anything else? Where is he? How long ago it possibly was? Why is he doing what he's doing? Suggestion of an actor. OK, cool. Anything else? <clears throat> That's all our answers so far. OK, so the reason why we ask these questions are it jogs your imagination. When, you, when you're when you in your exam and you go to write in a newspaper or an article, straight away, if you answer the five W's, you'll know automatically you, your, your setting, your scenery, what, what it is you're going for. So if I threw a picture, it could be anything, so I put black and white one in front of me today, um, I just ask you to answer simple questions just to start your writing off. Um, and it, and it, again, it helps. So again, on the right hand side, we've got another picture um, and think of adjectives to, to describe this image. And that will hit your level two because you're bringing in the adjectives to um, make your writing a bit more descriptive. So, the layout features of an article. Um, a headline is obviously important because it captures the whole article um, on one line and provokes an interest in the article below. So the paragraphs, the first paragraph is the leading paragraph. You can add your five W's, so who, what, where, when and why. It, your paragraphs should contain, the, the first one should contain the most important fact. Um, and then as you go on to write the rest of your article, the body of the article expands on the main fact and then continues with further facts and information. Um, so with your actual exam, the word count is 300, so they haven't actually got a paragraph count in there. So again, you can limit that to, say, five paragraphs, and in each paragraph, a point will be relevant, um, and that's where you'll hit, your, again, your level two. So if you have five points to talk about, you've hit five paragraphs, and then hopefully you've hit that word count as well. <clears throat> One thing to let you know that in the test, um, there is a word count that's on the screen. Um, so as you're typing, it'll tell you how many words you've done, so, so you'll know if you've hit that or not. Whilst it's not essential to reach that if it's not that if you don't reach the word count they give you zero uh, it is a it is a, a good guide and the, and there's you do lose points if you write too little or, or probably way too much so it is worth aiming for that and as i say in the test there will be a word count box that tells you how you're doing yeah perfect um and as as you go in along with your mock exams and you're doing them at home what i i normally suggest is 10 words to each sentence and five sentences to a paragraph um, that don't, I'm not saying sit there and count your words and your sentences, but you will have a rough guide on, on what the expectation is for your exam. So your subheadings adds that extra information to the headline. Um, it can be both, uh, both bold or underlined and will entice the reader to continue to read the article. You can have more than one subheading in an article. It's not just one underneath the first paragraph. It can be throughout your whole um, article. <clears throat> images um they're not essential but they 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 can be on your article you won't have that um as an option in your actual exam however i think paul i think you might be able to back me here you can draw like a little box and write image underneath it if you did want to go that extra mile um and then bold text again that's another layout feature that will be highlighted in your articles yeah and um and as Eamon said um the, there's a practice test system which is works exactly the same as the real test so you'll be able to practice that and put some of those things in and say image here and those kind of things and bolding text before you do your real test yeah perfect so 
the example of the layout. You've got at the top, that's just a typical newspaper layout article. So you've got the newspaper name, writer details, date and price. Now in your exam, you don't have to have that. But again, if you want to push yourself and go that extra mile, by all means you can do. <clears throat> the headline is obviously where what, what it is that you're talking about is at the top. Your subheading just underneath, it's in bold, it's in italic. You can have different colours in, but again, it's not really noticed. It's your italics and your bolds that they pick up on. <clears throat> and then you've got the main body of the text. So you've got your um, leading paragraph, obviously you will answer as many of your five W's um, as possible. And then the body of the article is where we fill the most necessary date, uh, details and connect all the dots together. Um, this fills out the article as a whole. The least important facts go towards the bottom of your article. So make sure you do prioritise your actual points. So you've got your um, article language. You use um, language techniques to add effect. For example, your similes, you have Boolean personification. And again, if you just want, if you want me to go through that, we did that at the very first um, um, PowerPoint that we did. Um, and we can resend that out if anyone wants to recap on that. Think about the setting, um, the, cor the correct emotion and mood. So alliteration sets the mood. Emotional language attracts the reader's attention. So the minute you start using these language techniques again in your written text, you're hitting your level two already because your examiner will be looking for these techniques as they're marking. <clears throat> so the headline, it captures the reader's attention straight away. So a snappy headline, it could be a slogan, even a rhetorical question. And I, I think I've mentioned it previously, your rhetorical question is a level two um, marked criteria. So if, you, if you're starting off with that already, your examiner will be ticking the right boxes. So an example of um, a snappy headline could be Captain Cook creates chaos. Um, so your language needs to be formal. Don't use qualifical terms. Writing style is in third person. You don't write from a personal perspective. Um, you could include wit witness statements, and that's more of your level two um, work. So did the neighbours see anything? But obviously you don't answer that as an I. You, you switch that to the third person. <clears throat> you know, I've always said that, that ideally in an article, you want to try and have some sort of quote or some sort of statement in there. So if you're writing about a charity event, you may say uh, the owner of the local uh, care home said and he speaks like this was the greatest event and he's a brilliant input to our charitable fundraising or something and it just shows again it adds a bit of context to it it shows that you've considered and thought about what you're writing as well so um, yeah. it's definitely worth trying to include something like that yeah perfect just mute myself sorry um so you can try and think about um when when we write as a whole, um, you're painting a picture for the reader. So the picture we draw, the words have to be clear and ordered ordered in an understandable way. So imagine trying to read a news article written by Jackson Pollock. Now you're going to say to me, who's this? I didn't know who it was either. So <clears throat> Paul Jackson Pollock was um, an American painter and a major figure in the abstract expressionist movement. He was widely noticed for his technique of pouring or splashing liquid household paints onto a horizontal surface, enabling him to view and paint his canvases from all angles. Now, the picture underneath was what we had at the very beginning, but that, that paragraph just there, if that was written in your article and you were talking about somebody, you've hit quite a lot of the language techniques already. <clears throat> so going on from your articles to report writing, it's similar, not the same. There is you have to change from again first person to third. So you change an opinion to a statement. So an example of this is I asked what was the most popular dish in his restaurant. He replied that it was lasagna. So where the arrows are pointing at the top in the yellow, remove the first person reference. Um, you remove your involvement um, and then you need to remove the question word as well. So the statement of the, what he was actually saying, his opinion, the most popular dish in the sh chef's restaurant is lasagna. So if you can see how he's converted what he was saying to a statement, it's quite simple, but until you don't get the swing of it, you won't understand it. But that's more your level to um, report writing. 
So changing an opinion to a statement again. So we've got I asked the chef if he created uh, if he catered for customer requests and dietary needs and he said yes. The chef caters for customer requests, requests and dietary needs. Uh, another example of it is I asked the chef if he changes menus regularly and if so, what did he look for when he, changing his menus? He said that one of the reasons were the, were the seasons which affected the kind of stuff he could make. The chef changed menus regularly. The factor that influenced the menu change was the seasons which affected meat and vegetable dishes. So again, he's changed an opinion into a statement. So when writing a report, you should use formal language. It is important to proofread your work. The passage below has not been proof uh, is not been proofread um, and includes a lot of informal language. So I have been to the brasserie for my interview and here is what I found out. The brasserie on George Square offers cosy dining in, in, in impressive settings. It is a nice place and the grub is local from local shops. It's got loads of seafood on dish and dishes using luck fine food and tasty Scottish beef that especially that's especially picked. So the error is already um, the spelling of brassier isn't how you spell it. Um, there's at the top he's used no capital, but then at this and the second sentence is used a capital. So you need to be consistent. If you are using the capital at the very beginning, keep that consistent with the whole structure of your work. If you're not using the capital, don't use it at all. So choose one way or another. Uh, impressive, the spelling isn't correct, place isn't spelled correct, dishes, the apostrophe is in the wrong place, so it's obviously after the S, um, and especially, again, the spelling isn't correct. With your um, writing exam, spelling is what is marked, so your grammar spelling is actually marked, so please make sure you do proofread your work. So the report layout, <clears throat> at the top we've got a heading, so this could be standard, every time question or alliteration as appropriate for your target audience. Then you, you can follow that through with an introduction, brief sentence to start your writing. Um, do not put I have asked to recommend because again, that's an, that's an opinion. Somebody's told you to do something. You need to change that into a statement. So here are even the word my take out here are recommendations for the perfect day out in Stratford uh, or Stratford as it is. Um, use head, uh, subheadings to head each topic. So under each subheading, use your paragraphs. You could use more than one paragraph under the subheadings. Remember to point, evidence, uh, point explain and then evidence it. You don't have to evidence it, but whatever what your point is, try and um, explain it. And if you can link it to something, brilliant. Uh, think about your target audience and what information they'd require. So if this is for recommendations, then give some personal opinion. However, try and stick to third person rather than first. So here they've given an example of my children really enjoyed feeding the lambs and later we had a lovely picnic by the ed edge of the lake. Um, or Arlton Towers can become very crowded, especially during the holidays. So I recommend you buy a fast track ticket to jump to the queues. Even in the report, you can use these as um, witness statements, what we said earlier on. So yes, they're in first um, person, but as you write in your report, you can suggest you've had um, um, feedback from the public and then you can put a quote in um, and what Paul mentioned earlier as well. So if you do add a few quotes here and there, you can then use the first um, first person. But if you don't, try and stick the third all the way through. So closing your paragraphs um, to finish your writing, you need to you do not need to say in conclusion as you will likely to be writing to write in a report for the exam again. Um, you may prefer to say, why not come and experience Stafford for yourself? Underline or um, you can use underline or italics your subheadings or use to emphasise the main points. Um, and of course, you can um, use the bold as well. Um, you can use different fonts with different styles and sizes. In the exam, you are not able to add an image. So if you did want to use a box and underneath write image, there could be an option for that. But if you can't, then don't worry about it. It's not that much of an issue. The, um, the report kind of questions in the test are usually or, or quite often are, are sort of work related. So it'll say uh, your manager has asked you to write report on whatever it might be. Um, so think about how you would write that for your work. If, if in real life your manager asked you to write a report on something, how would you do it? So as Eamon said, would you put it into those different sections with subheadings? So, so do that. 
Um, it is quite useful if you can give a number of options. So if a manager wants a report on um, options for increasing sales, you would usually want to try and give maybe two or th maybe three options would be ideal. So you've got a number of them and actually you can make your recommendation. So you can say based on the above, I would recommend option B because and then you can give uh, your reasons to it. So as Amy said there, you can give that personal opinion in there, but you probably want to lay out the facts before you do that. So you, uh, we always say with all of the writing, you don't have to be Shakespeare. You don't have to come up with wild and wonderful um, scenarios, but just think of, of practically if you had to do that for work. And even if you'd never have to do that, you can think they're usually everyday examples. So if you can think of maybe two or three sections or ideas that you can give and then sum up by saying uh, my recommendation would be or or for the company, one of the recommendations would be X, Y, Z, um, then that, that's probably a good way to think about laying out your report. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Paul. So um, rounding it off, we I have put two um, exam style questions. These are actually from City and Girls and um, the new reforms. So you've got an article question. You have a job working on a youth magazine. You have to write an article based on um, the title. One thing I would change in this world. A specific event in the history is something that you could include, something that is likely to occur in the future. The invention of a machine or piece of technology and um, something more personal to you. At the top, it says it might be, so you don't have to necessarily use them points, but if you're stuck, by all means, you can. Um, and then your task is to write an article. You can include, explain what it, uh, what you would change, why do you want to change it, how would your life be better, and how would you, how would the world be different? And approximately 300 words. This is a 27 mark exam. And then the next one is a report. <clears throat> So again, um, you work in the head office of a large high street clothes retailer that has many branches throughout England. One of your responsibilities is to visit the company's shops as a mystery shopper and to report back to the head office on your experience. Write a report to give your manager um, to give your manager about your visit to one of the shops. So the details you should include are details of your visit, appearance and tidiness of the store, availability of staff to help you, customer service skills and attitude for the staff, stock availability. And here where it says um, customer service skills and attitude uh, of the staff, that's where you can start to put in quotes as well. So not necessarily just um, what you've seen and you know what you've encountered, but actually what the service was. So staff were you know brilliant for whatever reason but then you can ask um you can say that you asked other staff questions on each other um and then add that into your report which you're going to be a level two i think one of the other things they're looking at that aim and uh, for me I'd, I'd look at that and go well that's giving me my sections already so i'd start off explaining my visit then i'd probably have yeah. a subtitle saying uh, appearance then i'd have one saying staff then i'd have one saying customer service and then finally saying stock and there's my i've got five sections there for 300 words that, that's not much to fill in each one and, yeah. and again use a real life example think of the last time you went to a shopping of any shop at all and just think about you don't have to come up again weird and wonderful things just was the stock available well you can either put that it was or it wasn't and then go into details of what maybe wasn't so i looking at that for me i'm not the most imaginative person but the, i think there'd be enough that i could think about of a shop visit to put under each of those sections to easily get 300 words yeah and i remember one of my first jobs was when i actually worked at next and mystery shoppers would come and go and we never knew until I think I was coming at, at the end of the job and I started my career in teaching. And that's when we started to know that actually mystery shoppers were everywhere. And I, did, I didn't know nothing on it. So if I was to write a report, I think I could write a lot more than 300 words. Linking it in. Do we have any questions? Oh, actually, no, before questions. So at the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand the features of um, newspaper and articles. Be able to understand the five W's, so please try and use that in your um, in your work. Understand the structure of a report uh, to be able to identify the difference between opinions and statements. Be able to proofread and edit your article and your report. Do we have any questions? Nothing's come through at the moment, but if anybody has got anything, then please do type in the chat box or you can turn your microphone on and ask you. You're very welcome to. Um, one of the uh, pre the previous um, English webinar we did was on uh, letters and emails. Obviously, today we've done articles and reports, and then uh, Eamon's doing on blogs and speeches next week, which are the main uh, the main kind of things you'll be asked to write. So they're they're good to to understand each of those different types. So that's good. Um, Mark's asked uh, if we'll make the PowerPoint and the slides available afterwards, which we will. Um, yeah. And that's about the pass mark for exam. Do you want to cover that, Eamon? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, about pass mark for the exam. So 
what what I try and do, and, and Paul does as well, is we with your mock exams, we try and mark you at 70% pass rate. Um, and the only reason for it is I know sitting girls are from 62% to 65% depending upon on your examiner. So, you know, if you've not got such a strict examiner and you hit that 62%, you're passed. However, if you're hitting 70% with me and Paul, um, you should hit that criteria when it comes to your exam. And we'll warn you now, we usually mark quite harshly to uh, yeah. really push you as well. So um, one of the things, and again, this is one of the differences actually between the new and the old um, uh, functional skills is, is the mark scheme. You usually get about the same marks, but they're broken down slightly differently. So in the old mark scheme for writing, you got marks for spelling, punctuation, grammar, but you also got things about whether you were logical, whether your information flowed, um, up to I think some of those, whether it was concise, um, whether you'd covered all the points, uh, and there were individual marks for each of those, so a little bit easier to mark. The, the new marking scheme gives you points for spelling, punctuation, and grammar, and, and they're fairly straightforward. The, the more mistakes you make, the less points you get. Um, but then most of the points, I think probably about 18 points and then like that, are just on the content. So all of those things I mentioned are all bundled in together. So it, they're looking about, does it flow well? Does it cover what they've asked? Is it concise? Is it logical? Has it used appropriate language and layout and things? So it's, it can be a little bit harder to mark, well, much harder to mark actually, the, the writing test rather than some of those, because there is that little bit more variable. Um, so as Eamon said, we, if we can try and push you to as high as possible, then hopefully the, the things you're putting in will be, um, the examiner will spot as well. Yeah, perfect.